Hi guys, we are going to be looking at chapter three of Brave New World in today's video. Um, as promised, it's going to be quicker and more condensed than our previous videos. So follow along. Remember, there will be questions embedded along the way that you will need to respond to, and you'll get credit for completing this homework assignment and it'll help your grades out. So um, as we begin chapter three, there are a couple of important key things to know. The first one is that we are still on a tour with the director of hatcheries and conditioning and the students. But in addition to the director of hatcheries and conditioning and the students, we are going to be introduced to some new characters. Um, the first is Mustafa Mont, he is the world controller for the European region. He's one of 10 people who is in charge of this entire world state government in the across the globe. So he's going to come in and it's an honor that he makes an appearance and he's going to give us some more background on the history. Um, we also meet um, our main character. We meet a man named Bernard Marx. He's an alpha. He works in the psychology bureau, and we're going to find out that he has some conflicts um, internally with how this society operates. He feels like a misfit and that he just does not fit in. Um, he also really, really hates Henry Foster, really hates Henry Foster, that young man that we met in chapter one who explains some aspects of the reproductive process. We also get to, we re-meet another person. Um, we'll see Henry Foster again, but from chapter one, there was a young woman who was introduced to us. Her name is Lenina Crown. Um, Lenina makes an appearance during this, uh, during this chapter because she too becomes a pretty central character for us. Uh, Lenina, she is a beta. We met her first in the embryo store. She was the one um, inoculating embryos uh, and the fetuses against tropical diseases. Um, she has kind of a little something something going on with Henry Foster and she's going to be a really good representation of what your average um, person in the world state is going to be doing with their life. And we also meet Fanny Crown, um, Lenina's friend. They are not sisters. Um, but we meet Lenina Crown as well. So there's something really important to keep in mind about chapter three. This is probably, I would say, the most difficult chapter of the entire book solely because of how it's structured. Um, over the course of chapter three, we have four voices um, and four scenes that we cut between really quickly. Imagine like jump cuts in like a YouTube video or a film that transition between scenes very, very quickly. That's what chapter three is really set up like. So our first, um, our first scene voice that we want to pay attention to is the scene that has the director of hatcheries and conditioning, the students, and Mustafa Mond. The, the, that scene is all about the history of the world state. Um, and what life was like before the world state and what life became with the world state. Um, our second scene that we're going to keep track of is a scene mainly centered around Bernard Marx. We see him interacting with Henry Foster quite a bit. Our third scene that we're going to keep track of is the interaction between Lenina Crown and Fanny Crown. Um, they're focusing on discussions that really are central to the experiences of your average people in the world state. And then we're going to hear more of those hypnopedia brainwashing mottos um, from the world state that the world state uses to condition people. So I will give you a little bit of an insight um, with my copy of the book right now. I even went through and I've highlighted each of those voices um, as chapter three progresses, because as you can see, as we get a little closer to the end of chapter three, it's going to get real messy. So you can see each of those colors is a different section, um, and we jump really quickly between the three. So 
things that we want to keep in mind for uh, chapter three, the structure is a battle, but we will be working to read our way through that structure with some activities in class next class. So starting out um, at the beginning of chapter three, we're in a scene with um, Mustafa Ma or the director of hatcheries and conditioning and his students, and they are still touring the um, Central London Center for Hatching, Hatching and Conditioning, um, or the Central London Hatchery and Conditioning Center. Um, instead of looking at small children now, we're looking at school age children. They're outside, they are watching um, these children playing outside, and the games that these children are playing will probably shock you. Um, we find out that in this society, Sexuality is no longer a taboo. Sexuality is no longer something to be ashamed of. So we actually see like there's just, there are discussions of children playing erotic games together in the bushes. And that is not discouraged. In fact, it's encouraged. And the children who don't play along with those games um, face additional conditioning to make them be okay with this standard of society. So we start to find out over this conversation and when Mustafa Mond joins that conversation that um, there's a lot of shifts and reversals of what we would deem appropriate or inappropriate um, into the world of the world state. So we see um, sexuality, especially amongst children being encouraged. Um, and the world controller Mustafa Mond gives us a little bit more information or gives these students a little bit more information about what the world was like before. And the DHC is really worried about this because Mustafa Mond is sharing information that not everybody has access to. And so as one of the big head honchos of the world state, um, Mustafa Mond has access to other books. And so he gives them a background on history. And that's what that scene is focusing on over the course of this uh, chapter. When we get to a break from this scene, we shift towards um, first Lenina Crown. Um, at the end of their work day, um, they Lenina heads out to um, go get changed um, and ready to go out for the evening. So she's talking with Fanny and we find out that she's been seeing Henry Foster for about four months and Fanny is very concerned. You don't go on out with just one person for four months at a time, that's just not done. Um, and so Fanny works to encourage Lenina that she needs to be a little bit more promiscuous, otherwise people will talk and what will they have to say? Um, and so we see this contradiction to what we expect in our society. Our society has been much more focused on monogamy and being with one person at a time, like one person, and that's your person. Um, but we find that the world state is much more free um, with their expectations of love and romance. When we shift from um, Lenina Crown to, say, Bernard Marx, we see Bernard Marx interacting with um, Henry Foster, and Henry Foster's talking about Lenina in the men's um, changing room. He's talking about his experiences with Lenina and is encouraging other men to take advantage of taking, spending some time with her. Um, and this starts irking Bernard Marx. We find out Bernard has a bit of a crush on Lenina, and he's getting really frustrated with these other men talking about Lenina as though she's neat. Um, and so we already start to see a conflict between Bernard and the society's expectations. Um, and our final scene and voice, like our final voice that comes in will be some of those hypnopedia recordings. So as we look a little bit further into um, 
chapter three, we're going to want to pay attention to those kind of moments that sound kind of rhymey or out of place. Those things are going to be um, hypnopedia recordings. So I'm just trying to find one for us really quickly. Um, as we think about these differences between the world state as it exists in the society that um, Aldous Huxley is writing about and the society that we are more familiar with. So um, just trying to find a little bit more of those hypnopedia recordings. And we'll talk about these sayings. Ah, I found some. So we'll see periodically these little kind of repetitive um, sayings like, I do love flying, I do love flying, or even ending is better than mending, ending is better than mending. They're quick, they're quippy, they rhyme, they stick in our minds. And so that's one of the key features of those hypnopedia recordings. They get so instilled within the people um, during that conditioning um, while they're sleeping that they become guiding focuses for, for this world. Um, so, like I said, this is a complicated uh, chapter because of how it's structured, but we've got a lot of things that we will be doing in class to break down the structure of it and get to know what people inside of the society are thinking about, how they feel, um, what they value. And so we're moving away from general knowledge about the world state and starting to see how it how individuals operate within that world. So I'm going to end our video there at about 12 minutes. Um, be ready to continue on with this in class. So we'll see you soon.